this new character is going to change Mortal Kombat 1 in a big way. And in today's video, I'll explain exactly why. And then on top of that, there's also more Peacemaker news to cover, crossplay is coming, there's a free play weekend, and more. So all of that stuff is getting discussed in today's video because another day means more Mortal Kombat 1 news. I'm covering it all the time on this channel. So if you want to stay up to date, then make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss any future videos. And then after watching, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like down below. It helps my channel out a ton. And without any further ado, let's begin. Starting off with Jeanette Cage. I know some people prefer Janet Cage. I just have an easier time saying Jeanette Cage. So that's what I'm going to say. I'm sorry. It's just, it rolls off the tongue easier for me. And anyway, that's not the point. Today we're talking about the gameplay, which has me very excited. And here's why. No matter who your favorite character is, right? No matter who you main in Mortal Kombat 1, Jeanette Cage can turn you into Kenshi. And if you don't believe me, just check this out. She hits Liu Kang to extend the combo, and then she stays on screen. Already that's crazy, but look how many attacks she gets to do before she finally has to leave. Two, three, four. That is crazy. Four different attacks before she has to go. That's already crazy for combos like we saw in this video. There's going to be so many awesome combo videos when this character becomes available, and I want you to send them to me on Twitter, okay? If you can pull off a swaggy combo with Jeanette Cage, then I want you to send it to me. I want to react to these things. It's going to be crazy. She's pretty much Sento, but for any character you want to play. That's amazing. That's crazy strong. And next up, I want to break down exactly what attacks she's doing and how they could be used in other scenarios, all right? So so check this out. This first attack she does does not seem like a big deal, but it is. She smacks them in the face and keeps them standing. That means if you have the opponent cornered, you could loop this. You could punch the opponent, have her kick them, punch the opponent again, have her kick them, do a string, have her kick them. Up to four times you could loop this because she's not launching the opponent, which means they're not going to fall out of the combo. This little kick right here might not seem like much, but it's going to be really strong, especially in the corner. And now just imagine the block pressure, right? You force the opponent to block. Maybe Jeanette's behind the opponent, or once again, you have them cornered. You can do a block string and then have her attack them to force them to keep blocking. Then do a string, have her attack, force them to keep blocking up to four times before she has to leave. I was not joking when I said she turns your character into Kenshi. She really is like another version of Sento, it's crazy. And that's just the first kick, let's keep watching. All right, one more kick, and I think it's the same kick, but as we see here, it can launch the opponent really high into the air for follow-ups, like he went pretty high. And then an uppercut. Yeah, that could be an anti-air, or maybe you could loop uppercuts back and forth. Can you imagine that? You uppercut, she uppercuts, you uppercut up to four times? That would be so swaggy and hilarious. Not very damaging though, because for anyone not aware, uppercuts scale really hard in Mortal Kombat 1, so they're not optimal mid-combo anymore like they were in past games. Even in Mortal Kombat 11, for some characters, it was optimal to do an uppercut mid-combo, but not so much in Mortal Kombat 1. It's been nerfed, but for the style points and just to mess around with your opponent, imagine looping uppercuts, how sick that would be. And also keep in mind, it's an anti-air, and she stays on screen. So you could summon Jeanette Cage to extend a combo, then switch to defense. And if the opponent tries to jump in, you can literally be holding block, or at least walk away from the opponent and have her anti-air for you. There is no risk to you. She gets hit, not you. That's crazy. This character has so much versatility, and it's just the first combo. And then finally, we have the green kick. I wanted to bring this up because I theorized this months ago. Since Johnny Cage no longer has the green glow in Mortal Kombat 1, I was expecting Jeanette Cage to have the green glow, or maybe Cassie Cage, if those rumors are true, and she's gonna be in the game too at some point. And now we know for a fact that Jeanette Cage does have the green glow. I just wanted to point that out. And it's a shadow kick, so that means that she can probably whiff punish and travel a long distance too, because the shadow kick is great for that. All right, this next part is cool too. Look at that jumping punch to extend the combo, and then you can follow up with a projectile from full screen. Any Shang Tsung mains watching or Quan Chi mains watching, you might want to use Jeanette Cage because she gives you full conversions off a projectile. That's gonna be really good. And like you'll see later on in the video, she can loop that jumping punch. It looks really weird, but she can do it. She can do three jump punches in a row. <laughs> You're gonna see that later on. This clip is not that impressive, but the point is she converts combos off things. Oh, and it's an ambush too. 
That is not a summon. Peacemaker is mid-attack and can still use Jeanette Cage, so she's an ambush character too, not just a summon cameo. That's important to take note of. And then next up, we have the Human Shield. Check that out. Jeanette Cage can just take a hit for you. The animation looks really weird. I'm still not quite sure what's happening here. The first part, I kinda get. She runs in and is like, ah, oh, no, don't hit me. I think she runs into an invisible wall. Oh, she's doing a mime thing. Okay. She runs into an invisible wall and then some invisible force pulls her off screen. It still looks weird. I feel like that kind of flew over a lot of people's heads. I thought that she was miming, but I'm still not quite sure why she flies off stage. But you get the idea. She creates an invisible wall that takes the hit for you. That's pretty cool. I'm wondering if you still take tiny damage, because for anyone not aware, if they hit your cameo, you do take a tiny bit of damage. But since you're not actually hitting her and you're hitting the invisible wall, I wonder if it's different here. That would be pretty cool. Kind of like a pseudo absorb, right? She absorbs the hit, but there's no consequences. That would be sick, if so. I hope that's the case. And that would also mean that if you hit Jeanette Cage when she's doing this, it's not gonna mess with her cameo meter. She's gonna refill like normal. All right, then next up we have the regular combo extender, the famous nut punch, but she slides in. So it's gonna be a bit easier to combo into. It is a summon ability though. You can't move while doing it. Still a good combo extender though. And here's the craziest part to me. There's so much to unpack here, watch this. One, two, three. And she glows green for two of the punches. Does Jeanette Cage have some sort of just frame timing or something technical like that? Why is she buffed here? She's glowing green for a reason, and it's only for two of the three punches. So I wonder what's going on here. That's really interesting. But also, this means once again, you can get a full combo off a projectile or anything that launches the opponent. Even if you're really far away, you can send in Jeanette Cage and she'll full on wombo combo them with a triple punch. And all three of those connect, which gives you time to follow up. And I'm I'm pretty sure that's an ambush. Yeah, it's an ambush. John Cena never stops moving. Peacemaker is always walking there. So yeah, that's an ambush ability that extends your combo. Sick. Three hits. Three free hits, man. So good. That is crazy. And then we have the fatal blow. Yeah, can you see why I'm so excited for Jeanette Cage and had to make a video about her already? This stuff is hype. Whoever you play can pretty much be Kenshi now. You got the Sento combos. You can use her for combos and knock the opponent back and forth like a volleyball game. You can do really annoying block loops in the corner and stun loops in the corner. You can absorb projectiles and hits with her. You can get full combos off projectiles and other far range attacks with her triple jump punch and then still have time to come in and end the combo yourself. This character looks really good and I'm excited for Jeanette Cage. I like her gameplay and I think she's going to bring a big change to Mortal Kombat 1. The meta is going to be shooken up big time. All right, but now it's time for Peacemaker news. He's coming to Onslaught. For anyone not aware, maybe you live under a rock. Mortal Kombat Onslaught is a mobile game that released last year and my buddy the Four Snake actually loves it and normally he hates all the new Mortal Kombat stuff and he still enjoys it, so it must be kind of fun. For me personally, I haven't touched it, but I'm also not a big mobile game guy. I had a mobile game phase for about a year and then I just fell off. But even so, I'm sure some of you watching are Mortal Kombat Onslaught fans, so I wanted to let you know Peacemaker is coming to that game. Now the official release date has not been made public, but we do know that he's coming soon. And you know what else is coming soon? Crossplay! That's right, better late than never, it definitely should have been there when the game first launched, but hey, we're finally getting crossplay when Peacemaker drops. Which is great news because finally that means that PC players, PlayStation players, Xbox Series X players can all game with each other regardless of which platform you're on, but unfortunately the same can't be said for the Nintendo Switch. It looks like they're on an island all by themselves because I've gone to multiple sources and none of them list the Nintendo Switch, so I don't think they're getting crossplay, which is definitely a bummer. I feel bad for the Switch players, but I also understand why this is happening. Look at the Switch. Like look at the gameplay versus everybody else, right? They're two different games clearly. At least when it comes to optimization optimization and performance, there is no way that a Switch could keep up with a PlayStation match or a PC match. You get what I'm saying. To this very day, I am still baffled that Mortal Kombat 1 is not on PlayStation 4. Instead, it's on the Switch. And now finally, it's time to talk about playing Mortal Kombat 1 for free. That's right, there is going to be a free play weekend coming in March. So if you have any friends that were on the fence about buying Mortal Kombat 1, they're not sure if they would enjoy the gameplay, this is for them, okay? Let them know, hey, you can play for free on this weekend. 
so mark your calendar and save the date. It's coming in March. And I just find that really cool. I think that more games should do this. Have a free play weekend to get more people interested, and if they had fun, they might buy the game. And if they don't buy the game, they still had fun. And that's what it's all about. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like down below, it helps my channel out a ton. And then finish that combo by subscribing and ringing that bell so you never miss any future videos. Make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.